If you've ever tried the MRE Cracker Challenge, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. Hit me with comments on MRE stories. Always happy to hear them. If you guys are looking to support the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco, the gun world. 99 cents for the first month after that price goes up. Is it worth it? Absolutely. If you don't buy anything, it's not going to be worth it. Of course, we have our other sponsors. We have Vertex, or sick bags, gloves, and gear. And we have the USCCA, which is the US Concealed Carry Association. It is legal protection for responsibly armed citizens and as well as um, firearm knowledge, training, stories, lots of good information. Definitely go check them out. Link is right below. Ladies, and gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, Browning Automatic Rifles. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting pistol and concept. And the concept being is, can the standard handgun of the United States Army, the M17, be improved? Well, we'll find out right here. So we have the Wilson Combat P320. So we're going to talk about what Wilson Combat has done with this venerable pistol and see if they've made it any better, any worse. <laughs> Got to talk a little bit about it as well as do our full review that we always do on these pistols. Now, before I get into it, full disclosure, what is my relationship with Wilson Combat as far as this review is concerned? Well, in the case of this pistol, it was handled by a parent company, Leviathan Group. Big thank you to them. They handle everything. There's no exchange of money or anything like that. I did receive ammo in order to test this. Now, this being said, this was prior to the great ammo scare of 2020. Not as crazy back then as it is now. Now, most of my reviewing has been done before that ammo scare happened, which is good. I was able to get a lot of rounds on this. I've been shooting this and using it for quite a while at this point, and I have close to 6,000 rounds on it right now. So without further ado, let's get into this pistol. If you're not familiar with the SIG P320, the SIG P320 and the M17, which has a couple minor changes to it, um, are pretty popular handguns, and they're probably on track to be among the most popular handguns due to the adoption by the United States military, the M17 for the Army and the M18 for the Marine Corps, Air Force, nobody cares, and Coast Guard, nobody cares, and Navy, but again, nobody cares. So how does it perform when we've Gucci'd it out, when we've put a lot of great accoutrements on it, and when we've done a lot of great work to it. Because in my opinion, the P320 and the M17 both leave a little bit to be desired in certain departments. Let's see if they've been able to fix some of that. We're gonna go tip to butt as we always do, and we'll talk about how this thing either does or worse than the M17. First things first. So starting tip to butt, we do have a 4.7 inch barrel. It is PVD coated, which is a great coating used on many barrels. Now, a lot of people have noted with the SIG P320 that they are inherently accurate and they seem more accurate than many other service pistols use, such as the Glock 17 uh, and multiple others. So obviously I was skeptical going into it. It's, it's always been in my opinion that typically the problem isn't the gun, but rather the shooter, especially when it comes to handguns. But in the case of the P320, I was very pleasantly surprised at how well they shoot. Now, when you get over to the Wilson Combat P320, that is absolutely true. I've been pretty impressed with the amount of accuracy that I've been able to get out of it. Um, with this pistol, I can fairly easily and repeatedly make shots at about 120 yards with no problem. Uh, do you have one more? Yeah. That's well outside the range of kind of the effect of the effectiveness of the nine mil. Would I want to be shot at 120 yards with nine mil? No, but you know, some Marines out there is like, I would. But <laughs> in any case, the point being is that it is an incredibly accurate system. And Wilson Combat has done great things to ensure that everything is fitting and locking up perfectly. And it, in my opinion, probably better than what you'd see from the factory. And that should be the case as this is compared to the model that's based off of, which is the P320X full. It's a solid, you know, depending either hundred, a couple hundred or like three to 400 more than that pistol cost. So there should definitely be some benefits there 
that are tangible compared to the factory offering from SIG. But in any case, I've been very pleased and very impressed with the accuracy I've gotten out of the barrel. Now that of course comes to multiple other factors such as the grip and the trigger. And we'll talk about those in a little bit here. Now going back from the barrel, a big improvement that Wilson Combat made over the stock P320 is some of the changes that they have made to the slide itself. So they get an unfinished slide from SIG and they do their own milling. So specifically, they do their x tack which is these little diamond prints you see all over the gun right here. And that is for a grippable surface. We have both the front as well as the rear serrations, the diamonds on here as well. Now, a lot of people have noted that we have these on the top as well. And they've wondered why are those there? What those do is when the sun is beating down on the top of the weapon, it helps kill down on the glare that you'd get off the top of the pistol. That can help in a multitude of situations. In any case, it's a small but significant thing that they've done to this particular slide. Another great thing that they've done with the slide is they've beveled most of the edges, specifically at the front. What that helps you do is simple holstering and unholstering. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but honestly, those small changes can make a big difference. I have a couple uh, pistols that have uh, beveled for carry and it absolutely matters. And many pistols now come stock with that option. And in every way, I believe that the stock SIGs should come with slides like those from Wilson Combat. In my mind, the P320 should be this and not the factory model that we're currently getting. The same goes for the M17. So from those small changes alone, I think that it is superior to the Army's standard handgun. Now we can't talk about the slide without talking about the sights as well. So on the sights, we do have suppressor height sights right here. Now these are from Wilson Combat. They are excellent. A lot of weapons <laughs> mean a lot, including Glocks, um, 1911s, high-end 1911s, all of them. I almost always had the sight fall out of my pistol at some point during my review process. Um, I've rarely had a sight stay still and actually be good the entire review. So the Wilson Combat joins a small but very elite cadre of handguns where its sights have actually stayed in place. So a big good on you, Wilson Combat. I'm sure that they knew that this pistol is going to be and they might have worked on it more, but you'd be surprised at how many handguns show, show up, you know, being cherry picked and they still have the sights fall off on them all the f time. So good on that. I do like the suppressor height sights quite a bit. The front sight has a fiber optic. It's one of my preferred front sight blades, so I love it quite a bit. The backs are serrated, of course, to kill down on glare. And then the rear is a simple U-notch um, with serrations at the back as well. It's a very comfortable sight picture to look through in case your dot goes down, which brings us to our next point, which is optics mounting. Now, in the case of this particular slide, it is cut for the acro. So the acro will mount directly into the slide. And I think perhaps in many ways, the acro is a better choice because it's going to sit lower and allow you to use the standard sights on the Wilson Combat. So in the very near future, I will definitely be swapping over to the standard Wilson Combat combat sights and moving over to an aimpoint acro, battery life notwithstanding on those particular models. But if you prefer to run an RMR or an SRO or something like that, in this case, I have an RMR on here from Trijicon, you do need an adapter plate and it does sit a little bit higher. Because of that, you need the suppressor height sights. I've not encountered any problems from using that or anything. The Trijicon sits at a very good place. It's very natural to bring it up. Of course, it would just be nicer to have it down lower. But in any case, I think this would definitely work better with an acro. On the side of the, of the slide as well, of course, we have the six hour P320. The opposite side, we have the Wilson Combat with their very attractive logo. Um, very good machining work, very good DLC coating all around. Um, I haven't noted any undo wear or anything from using this, some holstering and unholstering all the time. I've carried this a lot. So it definitely has held up very well. Um, a big kudos to them on their coatings. Um, the M17 and M18, in my opinion, don't have the greatest coating. I've had them rub off fairly easily. I don't know if that's been solved or anything like that, but I can definitely appreciate what Wilson Combat has done. Of course, on the barrel, we have our 9x19 markings. This is a 9mm pistol. If you're concerned about 9mm being a problem, it's probably you. Just get better at shooting. Okay, moving down from the slide, we do have perhaps the greatest innovation to ever hit the P320, and that is going to be the frame. I feel like I could make an entire review on the frame and how Wilson Combat probably is going to save the P320 with their frame because their frame is in every way incredible. Um, it is the 
frame that should come with the P320. Current P320 frames are not great in my opinion, but the Wilson Combat one is excellent and also very cheap. I think they're, I think they're like 50 bucks to swap it out. It is completely and utterly worth it if you don't get the Wilson Combat 2. At the very least, if you have a P320, to get the Wilson Combat frame. Now, that being said, if you're a monster and you have giant monster hands and you scare children and people don't like to shake your hand and that type of thing, not because you squeeze too hard because you're trying to be a, you know, show people that you're strong. You're not, by the way, uh, but rather because you've just been cursed with ungodly large hands, then the Wilson Combat frame is probably not for you because it sits just a little bit under the size of the medium um, back straps of the Wilson Combat and between the small. So it's perfect. It kind of feels a lot like a Browning High Power or a 1911, and that is absolutely perfect when it comes to grip sizes for me. So to talk a little bit about it, first off, the angle, and I understand that comes down to the P320 as well, but they've done a couple good things with the angle where they put the palm swells, and because of that, this feels very much so like a 1911. I hate to say it, but the 1911 has one of the best feeling kind of pointability of any handgun out there, and the P320, feels much closer to the 1911. So that is awesome there. They have undercuts on the back strap right here so you can get right under the beaver tail. And the beaver tail is also much higher than many other models. So they did a really good job there. There's also undercuts underneath the trigger so you can get your hand up higher on there and make sure we're getting the correct amount of leverage on there. Being that I've shot this quite a bit in the Pacific Northwest, we of course have encountered a lot of rain. I've had no problems gripping this handgun in the rain. Um, I can have those problems with Glocks, which is on why on almost all of my Glocks, I have the frame stippled to help me to be able to grip it. I do not have to do that with the Wilson Combat. That being said, it's not so aggressive that you know, when I'm going through like a day long course that I'm just like, my hands like raw and I'm dying by the end. It's at that nice medium right between. So it feels very good in the hand. I can definitely appreciate everything that they have done on the frame on the Wilson Combat P320. So excellent on them. If you have a P320, absolutely buy the frame at the very least. It's the best upgrade you'll ever make. A big note has to be made also for the magazine well. So the P320, I've always noted to be a very easy pistol reload. I don't know if it's due to the placement of the slide release, slide stop, again, nobody cares, or what it is, but the P320 from Wilson Combat feels even better. They've added a larger magazine well to the bottom of their frame, so when you're doing your reloads, like, it just drops right in. It's one of the quickest reloads I've ever done. I definitely appreciate everything that they have done on just speeding everything up. It was definitely designed by shooters for shooters. So as a final note, if you have a P320, you should get the P320 frame. It is absolutely worth it in every single way and will make your P320 an even better firearm. So now that we've talked about that, let's talk a little bit about the trigger right here. Trigger is phenomenal. This one has had an action job from Wilson Combat, which is an option that you can get. And uh, on my Lyman pull gauge, I'm getting about two to two and a half pounds. It feels even lighter due to the fat, flat face trigger. A lot of people don't like flat face triggers. Now that being said, it does have a little scoop at the bottom to make sure I don't lose it with my finger. So I do appreciate it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and let's go set trigger together. Let's go ahead and put on a little unchained melody. Put your finger right over mine. So first off, we have about a millimeter of just play right there before we hit our first wall. About another millimeter, two, mil two millimeters of squeeze until we hit that. It's fairly smooth. It is, of course, a striker fired weapon. Feels very good. Let's feel that reset right there. The reset is how far I have to let the trigger forward before the gun is ready to fire again. Okay. All right, about, about two millimeters, about to where we had a break right there. Then another two, mil two millimeters back. So when it comes to the trigger, it is ages better than a Glock trigger, but I will say that the reset on the Glock 17 is much more positive and engaging tactile. That being said, how much does it matter? Maybe not as much as I make it out to be. I think the trigger pull matters much more than the reset, as long as the reset is short enough. And when it comes to this, the reset is definitely short enough. So trigger is absolutely excellent. I definitely have grown to really love the trigger on this particular handgun. It'll be hard to move to other handguns after this. Now, is this trigger as good as the Walther, you know, Q4s, Q5s, and PPQs? No. Is it as good as a VP9? It's getting close. It's getting right around there. But in my mind, the Walther is still the 
undeniable champion when it comes to trigger pulls. But in any case, great trigger on the Wilson Combat P320. They did an excellent job as well. The trigger is drop safe from everything that I've seen. Again, I've just dropped this thing on the ground from head height. Of course, earlier P320s had a problem. So of course, after they resolved those problems, I haven't really heard anything, but from everything that I've seen, this trigger is absolutely combat and duty ready in every way. And I would expect nothing less of Wilson Combat. So we've talked through the entire pistol. The question is, what is it like to shoot? So the P320, like many other SIGs, uh, ever since like the 226, suffer from the problem of height over bore. Now, the P320 is better at this than others that SIG has made, but it still falls short. Height over bore refers to how high the barrel is over my grip when I'm shooting. Due to the height at which I'm gripping this weapon, the, as you can see right there, make sure I have it lined up, the Glock is just much, much lower and the hand sits much lower. That allows me to get a little bit more leverage. This also means that leverage is working against me on the P320, because when I fire it, I have more mass that's going to be cycling higher above my hand. That gives it leverage, science and shit, it's going to recoil more. It's just the way it's gonna feel. Compare that to the Glock or many other handguns out there, uh, the Breda 92, the CZ75, which have a lower bore axis, maybe not so much the CZ75. I know you guys are gonna get mad about that one, but it's much easier to keep the dot in my view, to keep the muzzle rise down, to keep this thing on target. I can absolutely do that with the P320. There are many excellent shooters with the P320 out there, and I have no doubt in my mind that you can shoot, you know, sub two second build drills with this gun. But you're definitely gonna have to focus a little bit harder compared to other pistols out there. So no matter what, as good as we make the pistol, it is still a P320 at its very heart. And it comes with some of those quirks that the P320 has, such as height over bore. That being said, we have an excellent, excellent firearm. In my opinion, one of the best examples of the P320 and what they should have been from the factory. It's incredibly accurate. Again, I've been able to make 120 yard shots at this with absolutely no problem. Very accurate, very repeatable, and a very reliable, reliable weapon. I absolutely would trust this in a duty type role or for a concealed carry role for anything that you citizens out there need it for. But the question is, is, is it worth it? Because this thing comes around at between a 1,100 to 1,300. That's a lot of cash to talk about. And you know, that comes down to you, if we're being honest. I think for most people out there, you're probably gonna be better off with a stock model and a shit ton of ammo. I know it's hard to get right now, but you're gonna be better off doing that and getting the practice or taking the class with the money that you would have spent on a higher grade pistol. That being said, if you can budget and afford this weapon or afford any other nice handgun out there with the optic and everything on there, and you still have money for ammo left over, then absolutely spring for it. It's all going to come down to your budget. So make sure that you budget accordingly and make sure that you're leaving enough room for ammunition because as cool, as this gun is, and as great of an example of a combat handgun as it is, if you don't train on it, it isn't going to matter. So make sure, guys, that you get training, and girls, and my Browning Automatic Rifles, get training. There are tons of great places to get training from. Bear Solutions, Cogworks, Haley Strategic, probably my dad, um, Pat McNamara, tons of excellent people who will give you excellent training. All you have to do is just get over to them. And again, there's good trainers everywhere. Just vet them as best you can. I don't know all of them. That's something I'm not gonna be able to do, but vet your trainers, find good training and get out there and make your mind the weapon. Tool matters, but again, this is where everything's at. Make sure that you train this up more than you get a super, super Gucci nice handgun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys and your viewership so much. I've got nothing else for you today. Final thing for you guys today is to be critical thinkers. So often nowadays, we see something in the news or in social media and you immediately react to it because surely it must be true or surely it must be true because it directly plays into what you believe and know to be true. What I ask you to do is to challenge yourselves to reread stories, to re-verify sources, and to make sure that you challenge your own beliefs and thought processes to ensure that you're being true to yourselves. A lot of craziness going on out there, ladies and gentlemen. Love you guys. 
stay safe out there. You know, if you've gotten this far, that we're going to talk about survival dispatch more so now than ever. I think it's very important to invest your mind in survival skills. Survival skills are these things that kids used to know when they're, you know, six in the 1830s. Now, these are skills we no longer have because we live in a modernized society and it's not so necessary or imperative. But with the way things are going, it might be. So, so subscribe to Survival Dispatch. Get all that information and that survival knowledge. It definitely matters. A final shout out to my Patreon people. You are the wind beneath my wings and you make this channel incredible. Love you guys so much. Get in there, see all the crazy inside jokes that we have with each other. It's not really much. I just post every once in a while for you guys. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves. More coming.